Hi, welcome to another episode of Black Girl Magic Book Chat. I'm Larissa, the African American Resource Center Coordinator, and every Monday this month, we are reading a book by a black author that falls in the genre of horror or sci-fi or suspense, and then I'm chatting with y'all about them. So, this week I read The Strivers Real Spy by Jason Overstreet. This book was not what I was expecting, so, you know, we're doing these books from a specific genre. This one fell more into historical fiction, but it had elements of suspense, which really kind of, I guess, focuses on our theme. So, The Shriver's Row Spy is about a gentleman named Sidney. And as you can see by this cover, um, we're in the 1920s. So, he has just graduated from a school in Vermont with his master's degree in engineering. At, on the day of his graduation, a man comes up to him and says, hey, we've been watching you. We want you to come over and interview for the Bureau. We want you to meet J. Edgar Hoover, who has just been named director of the FBI. Although I can't remember if it's the FBI at this point, but so Sidney is like, Sure, okay, I don't know what this means, but I'll do it. So in a veil of secrecy, secrecy, he travels to DC. He learns that Hoover wants him to be a part of this borough. He goes through this sort of basic training, not as, a, I guess, like structured as the basic training we know, but it's a basic training. And once he's finished, he gets his assignment. His assignment is to spy on Marcus Garvey. And if you don't know who Marcus Garvey is, Marcus Garvey is what many pe- who many people consider the father of the Black Power Movement. He is, was a Jamaican man who, whose goal was to send, he wanted all people of African descent to return to Africa. He felt like um, <clears throat> the only way that we could, as black people, could thrive is if we go we went back to Africa and this is black people all over wherever the the ships dropped um descendants off our ancestors off he was like let's all go back to Africa so Sydney has to spy on Marcus Garvey and the reason they want to spy on him is because the FBI is convinced that he is a communist this is the time where um, this rise of communism is is a fear that the American government has. So he has to spy on Marcus Garvey and another agent has to spy on W.E.B. Du Bois. And so this is kind of where Sydney comes into conflict. So Sydney is not a fan of Marcus Garvey. If you don't know much about him, his the way that he operated was very I'm trying to think of a good word, um, very in your face. From all intents and pers- purposes, he seemed sort of arrogant. And I guess in, in some way, if you're gonna you know, head a revolution, there's gotta be some, a bit of, you know, I guess confidence. But he is kind of aired on the side of arrogance. He was loud, he was boisterous. He was very vocal about his hatred of many people. In this book, he's also got this this deep-seated hatred of W.E.B. Du Bois. W.E.B. Du Bois is Sidney's idol. So Sidney doesn't like Marcus Garvey, but he's been sent to spy on him. And so Sidney kind of has to figure out what that means. How is he going to do this? In all of this, Sidney is married, and they moved to Harlem, where, which is where Marcus Garvey is operating at this time. They moved to Harlem onto Strivers Row, uh, which is a section in Harlem of pretty well-off African Americans. And he and his his wife is an artist, and so she gets kind of rooted into the art scene. And this is right before the Harlem Renaissance, so music and art is kind of picking up in this area. <clears throat> so she's kind of like. Okay, this is great for me. Another thing is in this area, at least in some spaces, especially in the art world, 
it is still it's pretty integrated not still it is pretty pretty integrated so his wife loretta is kind of involved in that and on the side sydney is lying to her about what he's doing she thinks he's an engineer and consultant but everything he's doing is operating under the guise of like watching marcus garvey reporting back to the fbi about what garvey is doing while the fbi and the federal government tries to somehow get garvey out while garvey is doing all of this w.e.b du bois is head of the naacp um, they seem to be kind of losing some traction with some African Americans because W.E.B. Du Bois' goal is it's kind of steady, right? Like, we're playing the long game. We are, we're working for something that will likely come in the future. Garvey's like, no, we got to do it now. So you've got this young man who's an engineer by, by education and by trade who is now in the FBI. He's now a spy. He's sort of living this double life where he is in love with his wife and wants to give her everything but also is lying to her because he cannot tell her that he is an agent and everything that he's doing is dangerous so we see him go on this journey of kind of getting deep and deeper into Garvey's inner circle and at the same time anonymously helping out W.E.B. Du Bois, kind of letting him know like, hey, these are the things that are against you. And I liked it. Uh, it took me a little bit longer to read than the other ones that I've read this, this month, but it was, you know, as I got into it, it was really good. I know that it's historical fiction, so although a lot of what happened is based in truth, it is still fiction. But it kind of brought up a lot of really interesting things for me. So I have heard of both Marcus Garvey and W.E.B. Du Bois. Like, we, we all know who W.E.B. Du Bois is, but I, I know of Marcus Garvey as well. And I have my feelings about both of them. Um, some positive, some not. But it really kind of made me really think about what, what, what must it have actually been like to be around these men, because for us, they're just these historical figures, but at the time, they were like, and even, and even in a sense, they were kind of historical figures then. They were kind of these larger than life men um, who were doing what they thought was the right thing for um, people of African descent. They just had very <laughs> vastly different ideologies, but to just think about being in spaces where these men are strategizing, where they're working within various communities to try to make our world a better place, I, I was really like kind of fascinated by what that must look like, how it must feel to know that these are men who have followings. And within these followings are people who are hoping that these are the answers to oppression. These are the answers to, to, to being treated like human beings. And in this book, because it's told from Sydney's point of view, we kind of very much see that Mar Marcus Garvey becomes this figure that has to be stopped. And W.E.B. Du Bois becomes his figure that is, is uplifted. Um, and whatever your, your political leanings on these two men, um, this book definitely kind of steers you in a specific direction. But with that, it kind of shows you, you understand why Sydney is against Marcus Garvey. His is more of a, it's black separatism, which is for some people not a bad thing, um, but almost at the expense of the race. Um, and W.E.B. Du Bois' goal is full integration, which not a bad, you know, not a bad thing either, um, but sometimes in a way that asks us to Kowtow, if you will, kind of bend down towards um, the majority race or who was the majority at that time. So as I'm reading this, I will say it's suspenseful. Um, Sydney is a character who is moral and he's got his convictions and they never waver throughout this book. 
So you kind of always know that he's going to do the right thing, but this this was a this was a time when the FBI was not afraid to and maybe they're still not. I don't know anything about the FBI, but they were not afraid to harm to get what they needed done. Um, it made me think about, so if you follow my Black Girl Magic book chats, when I did the one in March, A Spy in the Struggle, where this woman went to California and she, and she worked for the FBI, and she kind of learned about what the FBI did to the Black Panther Party. It's kind of the same thing here, where they have decided that these men, whose own goals are just to to make sure that black people are not forever in, the, in this space of inferiority, they have decided that these men are a threat to American democracy. They are a threat to our way of life, which in a sense they were because their way of life wanted a, black people to to stay in that, that submissive place. And so their goals here were to, to get them out of the way, whatever that looks like, right? And so to know that merely saying like, hey, we don't like the way that we're being treated was enough to be on the government watch list makes you kind of angry. So I'm reading this and any conversation that he had with a lot of the government people. And the way this story unfolds is Sydney is one of two, I think, black men in the FBI. And so the way he's spoken to by the other agents and even J. Edgar Hoover, the way he becomes this, the good one, you know what I'm saying? Like he's the, the black guy who's, you know, you're not like the rest of them. So the, it, it was a book that made me angry, but I, I thought it was I thought it was really good. It did take me a little bit longer to get through, but once I got through it, I kind of was like, okay, I, I, I dig it. <laughs> um, and also, like, I would like to see it as a film, I think. I think this could be a good, a good movie. So... Hopefully that didn't sound rambly, uh, but it was it was a lot. Like this, it had, there were a lot of moving pieces, um, and so I wanted to kind of make sure you understood the gist. Okay, all right, um, I'm running out of time. So, the Shabbat Shalom spot. We have one more book, y'all. One more, um, and this is going to be a YA book by Tiffany Jackson. This is apparently like a carry. Remake, like a Carrie rewrite um, with a biracial character. So that's going to be fun, I hope. But I've, I've heard like nothing but excellent things about Tiffany D. Jackson. So I'm excited for our final book next week. I'll see y'all then.